This is MathHeals.com where you can find more links to uh, math and computer science YouTube videos. Let's take a look at triple integrals and cylindrical coordinates. And let's take a look at our first problem here. Got, uh, let's see, this outer one is z, so z is equal to negative 2, 2z two is equal to 3, and next one is theta, so theta is equal to 0, theta is equal to pi over 2, And then this one will be um, r. r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 1. Of um, r squared sine theta dr d theta and dz. Now um, this one's a cylindrical uh, coordinates. Next one is spherical. And um, I want to show an example of that to show the different different variable. Um, the examples I've chose to show in this uh, lesson are based upon cylindrical. Um, spherical I don't think is as straightforward. Um, cylindrical uh, I think the conversion you can it's much more robust what you can do with it. Um, the spherical has to be of a certain shape for it to really be beneficial. So on this one this is just a evaluating it like normal. So we're going to handle the inner integral. So it's going to carry down. So we've got z is equal to negative 2 to z is equal to 3. And theta is equal to 0. Theta is equal to pi over 2. And we're integrating in respect to r. Uh, so this will become 1 third r to the third sine theta from r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 1 d theta dz. Well the 1 third I can put clear out in front so I don't have to worry about it. And we've got z is equal to negative 2 to z is equal to 3 and theta is equal to 0 theta is equal to pi over 2 now the sine theta doesn't have an r in it so I can put it out in front of the bracket and we're left with r to the third from r is equal to zero to r is equal to one d theta dz okay so we're gonna have one third z is equal to negative two to z is equal to three theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to pi over two and I got sine theta and I'll plug 1 in for r, so I got 1 to the third minus, I'll plug 0 in for r, so minus 0 to the third. d theta dz. Well, 0 to the third drops away, and 1 to the third is 1, so that basically drops away. So let's work on this one here now. So we're going to have 1 third, z is equal to negative 2 to z is equal to 3. Um, the integral of um, sine is negative cosine from theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to pi over two well the negative I can put clear out in front so that gives us negative one-third and z is equal to negative two z is equal to positive three now I'm left with cosine in there and I can plug this in so I'll put in the pi over 2 in for theta so I got cosine pi over 2 minus cosine and put the 0 in for theta so cosine pi over 2 minus cosine 0 so we got uh, z is equal to negative 2 to z is equal to 3 now cosine of uh, pi over 2 if I look that up in my unit circle is 0 minus cosine of um, 0 is 1 dz. Now that negative 1 I can put clear out in front so we're gonna have negative 1 third times negative 1 
z is equal to negative 2 to z is equal to 3 dz. Now we're um, integrating with respect to z. And it's like the invisible 1 here, so that, that give us um, just z. And of course, negative times negative is positive, so that's 1 third z from negative 2 to uh, 3. Now, I always put the variables there because then it's really easy to keep track of everything for students but plug, and for myself. Uh, if I, now I'm going to plug 3 in for z minus, and I'll plug negative 2 in for z. Well, uh, negative negative becomes positive. 3 plus 2 is 5, so that gives us 5 thirds as our answer. Let me uh, save that. And this will be cylindrical. What is this? Triple integrals and cylindrical coordinates. So triple integrals in cylindrical coordinates. Page zero one. And let's start looking at our next problem. Like I said, this one's spherical. And uh, I'm not crazy about the spherical. It's one area where students have a lot of difficulty. And I, I actually struggle with them a little bit myself, unless I um, can look at the 3D graph of it. And um, my 3D um, utility expired. I could use wind plot, but it doesn't do a very good job. Okay, so um, the... The outer one is theta, so this is saying from theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi. Next one is phi, if I'm saying that right, or phi, I forget how they say it, 0 to pi over 2. And this is coming down from the, from the z-axis. And then uh, rho 0 to rho is equal to sine phi. And um, not very Greek, good with my Greek symbols. Forget that each semester. Okay. So let's uh, go ahead and find the integral of this. So there's nothing exciting we're doing on these. Um, I'm just showing you how you how you We'll find the integral. So we'll start with the inner one. Let's see, all this carries down. And we're integrating respect to rho. So that's going to become one fourth rho to the fourth cosine phi. And then rho is from 0 to rho is equal to sine phi. D phi, d phi, d theta. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay. So the 1 fourth I can put clear out in front. And I'm um, just about there. And we're plugging these in for rho, so I can put cosine phi out in front. So then we're going to left with rho of the fourth inside. So we're going to plug sine phi in for rho. So we'll have sine to the fourth phi minus, oops, and then we're plugging zero in for rho. So zero to the fourth. And um, those. Okay, so one fourth stays out in front. And uh let's see, phi is equal to zero to phi is equal to pi over two. And we're gonna have cosine phi and we'll have uh sine phi to the fourth power. 
Okay. Well, this is a U substitution. If we let U equal to sine phi, du, well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So cosine phi, and uh, then we'll put on our d, d phi. <laughs> that seems so weird. So um, this matches. So this becomes one fourth. Everything carries down. Oops. And uh, well, yeah, that's still there. And I got phi is equal to zero. Phi is equal to pi over two. And this becomes u to the fourth du d theta. So then we got one fourth. Theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to two pi. <coughs> now the conversion to get to these, it's without the graph, it's a little bit tricky because there's no like direct conversion formulas. But if you have the graph, then then these are pretty easy to come up with. The only one that's a little bit challenging is rho, um, but it's not too bad. <coughs> um, okay, so we're gonna have one fifth u to the fifth from phi is equal to zero to phi is equal to pi over two d theta. Well the one fifth I can put clear out in front so I don't have to worry about it. So we've got one fourth times one fifth and now we're going to plug our u back in. u is sine so this is um sine to the fifth of phi from phi is equal to zero to phi is equal to pi over two d theta so that gives us one twentieth theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to two pi and if I plug these in now I'm going to have sine to the fifth power of um, pi over two minus sine to the fifth power of zero d theta that gives us one twentieth theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to two pi. Now um, pi over two um, for for sine is equal to one, so that's uh, one to the fifth or one. Now sine of zero is zero, so zero to the fifth is zero. So this just gives us one d theta. I could actually just drop that one, but. So then I take the integral of this. The one twentieth stays out in front, and then I'll have theta from theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to two pi. Now if I plug those in, I'm gonna have two pi minus zero, which ends up giving us two pi over twenty, which is pi over ten. And that's our answer. Let me go ahead and save that. And let's take a look at our next problem. Uh, next problem is involving this conversion from rectangular to cylindrical. And I, and I said that the spherical is kind of limited, but actually cylindrical is kind of limited too. There's some places where it uh, best uh, best works and um, when you end up with like x squared plus y squared uh, a circle of some sort uh, that's oftentimes where cylindrical comes in handy and if you're talking about uh, uh, th three dimensions uh, thrown in there uh, where you have a sphere, we have a cone uh, then you can possibly use cylindrical there or spherical Now we're going to come back to this formula. Let's take a look at this first problem. Okay, this outer one is our x, so it's telling us it's going from x is equal to negative 4 to x is equal to positive 4. Our next one's our y, so we're going to y is equal to negative square root of 16 minus x squared to y is equal to positive square root of 16 minus x squared. And our z. z is equal to x squared plus y squared. 
and z is equal to 16. Then I got x, and then dz, dy, and dx. Well, if we think of our picture, and I'm not going to do it very well, 3D is not, not where I uh, excel. We've got uh, 16 here. And um, when you put different values in, the saying X is from negative 4 to 4, um, what you're going to find is if I put 4 over here and I, and I start working it and so forth and what Y can be, um, then you're going to find it's a circle. Four. See if I can draw it in three dimensions. It should be questionable. So that's our that's our base there. And um, it comes up here. And um, you, you'll find is that this will come down like that, like that. And I'm not drawing it well at all. Well, that should be like that, and then this should be like that. So that um, gives you a real rough picture, like half half a ball, if you think of it that way. Um, well, it's a elongated ball <laughs> because it goes up to to um, z is equal to 16. Now the um, Hopefully I drew that right. Let me think this through. Okay, x is going from negative 4 to 4. And y. So if I... I think I drew that wrong. What if I can do one plot to... Well, it's you get, you get the idea anyway. Well, the... Um, well, let me just try that. Yeah, that's right. Never mind. I'm drawing a drawing a blank there. Okay. So then um we start doing our conversion. And um our formulas for doing our conversion from cylindrical is we've got some basic ones. X is equal to R cosine theta. Y is equal to R sine theta. And uh X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. And um so to do the conversion here, we need to figure out how to switch these. And looking at the picture, again, really helps a lot on these. It, do, it isn't strictly necessary with cylindrical. With spherical, I think it is. Um, so for our Z's, we want to uh, convert this. So I'm going to have Z equals X squared plus Y squared. Well, we said X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. So we get z is equal to r squared and then of course 16 is just 16 so that stays that way now what our r goes from well if i um think of this right here we got um our y is equal to square root of 16 minus x squared if i square both sides i get y squared is equal to 16 minus x squared or x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. So in terms of the x and y coordinates, it's a circle of radius 4. Um, if I were to uh, do the conversion here, we could actually plug in x squared plus y squared, we said was r squared. So we just get r squared is equal to 16, and that would give us r is equal to 4. Now we don't have to go from negative 4 to 4 on this. Um, we're going to start it at 0 and we're going to go to 4. It's always better to start at 0 because remember when you take an integral of this it drops away really nice. So we're going from r is equal to 0 here to r is equal to 4. Out like that. Now our theta. If you look at it, theta is going completely around a circle, isn't it? So then we're going to have theta is equal to 0 2 theta is equal to 2 pi. Again, the graph is invaluable for um, for helping to see how to set it up in uh, cylindrical and, and spherical. 
Um, let me th this think for a second. Could I actually... Um, it might be hard to uh, do some of these without the graph. Okay, now um, back to our formula over here. This says we're going to plug in r cosine theta for x and r sine theta for y and z just stays z, but we have to add an extra r in. Well, here we got an x, and x we said was r cosine theta, so we replace that x with r cosine theta. And remember, over here we said we have to put an extra r in there. And then this would be dz, dr, d theta. Okay, so now we're ready to find our integral. And um, r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 4. Now, working inside here, of course, r times r is r squared, but we're integrating with respect to z. Nowhere is there any z's, is there? So this just becomes r squared cosine theta z. Again, we treat this part like a constant, and we just put a z on the end of it. And then this is going from z is equal to r squared to z is equal to 16 dr d theta. Oftentimes your integration is much easier when you switch it over. So we get this. Now the um, the only thing we're, we're replacing is the z. So the r squared theta I could put out in front of the brackets. And now I'm left with z inside. And I'll plug 16 in for z. So I got 16 minus, and I'll plug in r squared for the z dr d theta. Okay, well I'm going to multiply that through. And uh, theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi. r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 4. r squared um, cosine theta times 16 gives us 16 r squared cosine theta. r squared cosine theta m times negative r squared gives us negative r to the fourth cosine theta dr d theta okay so let me uh, do that one there theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to two pi um, we're integrating respect to r so I'm going to get uh, 16 times 1 third r to the third cosine theta minus 1 fifth r to the fifth cosine theta from r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 4 d theta. Now if I plug in 0 for r we'd have 0 to the third here which is 0 times cosine which is 0 times 1 third which is 0 times 16 which is 0 drops away. Now, plug in 0 here for r. We get 0 to the 5th, which is 0, times cosine, which is 0, times 1 fifth, which is 0. So that part's going to drop away. So the only part I have to worry about plugging in is the 4. So we got theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi. And we got 16 thirds times 4 to the 3rd cosine theta minus 1 fifth times 4 to the 5th cosine theta d theta um, I'm going to get my calculator. I don't want to hurt my head that much with basic math. Plus I'm getting tired. Been up since this morning writing papers and creating videos and Okay, so this one, assuming I typed in the calculator correctly, is going to be 1,024 over 3 cosine theta minus 4 to the 5th times 1 fifth. minus 1024 over 5 cosine theta d theta 
Well, I can factor a cosine theta out of that. So we got theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi. And factor a cosine theta out. And then that be left, leave us with 1024 over 3 minus 1024 over 5. Assuming I didn't type something in wrong. Or find my integral, integral wrong. Uh, R squared, one third. Okay. Plug Z in. Let me just double check real quick. The numbers seem really big for some reason. Plug that in for Z. Okay, took that out in front. So 16 minus R squared. Eh, it's looking right. Okay. Now, um, let's see what that is. 1024 divided by 3 minus 1024 divided by 5, enter, math, enter, enter. And that gives us a number we can put clear out in front. 2048 over 15. And then the integral, theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi of cosine theta d theta. So that's going to equal 2048 over 15. Uh, the integral of cosine is sine from theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi. Now if I plug those in, I got 2048 over 15 sine of 2 pi minus sine of 0. Well, sine of 2 pi is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So that'd be your answer. Keep in mind, I, I make these numbers up, so um, they come out weird, then and there's a possibility of reason why. That does seem extremely strange, though. Double check. Zero is equal to two pi. Zero. Okay. The train would quit whistling. <laughs> D Z D R D theta. Okay. Integrating respect to z first, so put a z on there, yeah, and then plug that in. And get that, 16 thirds, r to the third, yeah, minus one fifth. Yeah, sure enough. Okay, let me save that. screen. There we go. And let's look at this one. Now this one wants us to find the mass using these formulas. So for our mass, um, it tells us that z is between 0 and 5 minus x minus 3y. And then x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9. Again, we've got a circle in row of x, y, z is going to equal to k and then the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay. And um, this is a mass. So we're going to um, have our x values out here. They're going to be numbers. And we'll have our y values here, and we'll have variables of some sort in there. We'll come back to that. And then we'll um, have our z values here. And the z is pretty easy. That's 0 there. And um, 
then up here is going to be 5 minus x minus 3y. Now this is a um, circle so if I actually solved it I got x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9 um, if I looked at the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9 we'd have y squared is equal to 9 minus x squared so y is equal to plus or minus square root of 9 minus x squared so this is going to go from y is equal to negative square root of 9 minus x squared to y is equal to positive square root of 9 minus x squared that's our y's now for our x's if we started with uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 9 uh, y would be gone at this point so we put 0 in for it we'd have x squared plus 0 squared equals 9 or we get x is equal to plus or minus 3 so our x value is going from uh, negative 3 to positive 3 and then we have our row in here which would be uh, k and then the square root of x squared plus y squared dz dy dx well again the fact that this is a circle means it's better to uh, switch it over to cylindrical now if we think of our graph x squared plus y squared is equal to 9 it's going to be a circle like that which um, tells us theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi and r. r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 3. So those just kind of flowed naturally with a circle. Now the z. z is equal to 0. That doesn't change. Up here, z is equal to 5 minus x. Now remember, x was r cosine theta. So that's r cosine theta minus 3 times y, and y was r sine theta. Now the k remains. I'm going to put it out in front in a minute. Now here, uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So we'd have the square root of r squared. And remember, we had to put an extra r on here, like that. So then dz, dr, and d theta. Well, that simplifies a little bit. And I'll eventually get there. So 5 minus r cosine theta minus 3r sine theta. Uh, k I can go ahead and put out in front. And square root of r squared is r, so that's r times r or r squared. dz dr d theta. Well, we want to do the inner integral first. We're integrating with respect to z. There is no z's. So that just becomes z r squared. So we write all this down. Theta is equal to 0. Theta is equal to 2 pi. r is equal to 0. r is equal to 3. And this becomes z r squared from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to 5 minus r cosine theta minus 3 r sine theta dr d theta. Now we'll plug those in. And actually, the only thing we're changing is z, so the r squared I can put out in front of the bracket. And we'll plug this in for z. So we're going to have 5 minus r cosine theta minus 3 r sine theta minus, and we'll put 0 in for uh, the z, so we got minus 0. dr d theta. Well, I'll do a little bit of simplifying. So I'll multiply the r squared through. So that's going to give us r squared times 5 is 5 r squared minus r squared times r is r to the third cosine theta minus 3 r squared times r is r to the third sine theta 
dr d theta. Well, now we'll work with this uh, integral. And we got m is equal to k from theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi. And this gives us 5 thirds r to the third minus 1 fourth r to the fourth cosine theta minus um, 3 fourths r to the fourth sine theta from uh, r is equal to 0 to r is equal to 3 d theta. Well, the, if I plug 0 in for r, all these are going to drop away. So the only one I have to plug in is r is equal to 3. So if I plug that in, I'm going to have 5 thirds times 3 to the third minus 1 fourth times 3 to the fourth cosine theta minus 3 fourths times 3 to the fourth sine theta d theta. And uh, 3 to the third is 27. Divide by 3 is 9 times 5 is 45. 27, 9, 45, yeah. Uh, 3 to the 4th uh, is 81 over 4, so minus 81 over 4 cosine theta. Um, I think that's 243 over 4, but let me see. Two hundred forty-three. So that's minus 243 over 4 sine theta d theta. Okay. So then k remains. Um, take the integral with respect to theta, so this becomes 45 theta minus, um, wait a minute, uh, the integral of cosine is sine, so that's 81 over 4 sine theta. And the integral of sine is negative cosine, so this becomes a plus 243 over 4 cosine theta from uh, theta is equal to 2 pi to, or theta is equal to 0 to theta is equal to 2 pi. And let me write this down, because I'm out of room on this page. I have to go back later when I'm not so tired and check that one out. It comes up zero as the answer. That just seems so weird to me. There we go. Okay, I got that written down. So let me save this page. I did make an early a mistake on an earlier video. I uh, instead of putting x squared, I put an x down. So. I wouldn't rule anything out this time of day. Okay, so let's continue this problem. I think it was number four. Four. Continued. Okay, and we've got m is equal to k. 45 theta minus 81 over 4 sine theta plus 243 over 4 cosine theta. At least you get the idea, even if I did make a mistake on that one. 2 pi. Okay, now we're ready to plug those in. So k stays out in front. We'll plug in 2 pi for theta. So I got 45 times 2 pi. 2, boy. 2 pi minus 81 over 4 sine 2 pi plus 243 over 4 cosine 2 pi minus, and I put parentheses as flip sine of everything that follows it, and we'll plug in 0 in for theta. So 45 times 0 minus 81 over 4 sine of 0 plus 243 over 4 cosine of 0. 
Okay, so 45 times 2 is 90 pi. Now, sine of 2 pi is 0. zero. So the, um, that times 81 over 4 drops away. Plus 243 over 4 cosine of 2 pi. Cosine of 2 pi is the same as um, cosine of 0, which is 1. Minus. 45 times 0 drops away. Sine of 0 is 0, so that drops away. 243 over 4 times cosine of 0, which is 1. Which uh, these basically cancel out, so that leaves me m is equal to 90 pi over k, or 90 pi k. Boy, I'm slipping fast here. So we'll go ahead and save that. And that's the end of our um, end of our lesson. So let me go ahead and save this.